I did not know 26 episodes could make me spiral this hard. Between what we do and don't see, I'm scratching my head trying to figure out what, when, and why this all happened. But lovers, welcome back to another lore video. In this series, we explore shows and commercials that one time that no one else is brave enough to. Naturally, since I covered Jimmy Neutron last time and I didn't even mention Planet Sheen, this is the obvious next step. Truthfully, I wanted to see if I can get away with pretending the series didn't exist, but I could not. Planet Sheen aired from 2010 to 2013 on Nickelodeon and then moved its way over to Nicktoons. And over these three years, there was one season and 26 episodes. They were really dragging this thing out. Oh no, 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 no. So the plans for the series changed constantly and I found myself very interested in how many times it was pitched before the series got picked up. According to Wikipedia, I have to find other sources, my English teachers are punching the air right now. The first concept of the show was called Red Acres and it actually followed an adult astronaut crash landing on a planet full of nitwits. Nickelodeon said we love everything but we don't really do shows that follow an adult main character. I looked through the Nickelodeon catalog of shows and this still holds true. The only two I'd say don't are Yo Gabba Gabba and Lazy Town but even these two are debatable. Like is Spartacus the main character or the girl? Because younger Athena would say Spartacus because she really liked Spartacus. Not enough to exercise ever but you know. Where was I? Where am I? Oh, okay, yes. Nickelodeon shut down the idea because of the whole adult main character thing. So they changed the idea so instead of it being an adult astronaut, the story actually follows Carl and Sheen from Jimmy Neutron. But a Nickelodeon executive said, no, 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 Carl, just Sheen. And this really pisses me off. The creators Keith Alcorn and Mike Gassaway already changed their vision so much, even handing them over gold using a franchise that people are already invested in. And even an aspect of this pitch was changed. I have a lot of problems with this series and I believe a lot of them stem from the fact that they weren't able to tell the story they initially wanted to tell to the point where now it just doesn't make sense. But first let me introduce you to this goofy silly quirky cast. Who are you people? So the show follows Sheen Estevez from Jimmy Neutron. The very base level of his personality remains the same. Very hyperactive, fun loving, goofy, irresponsible. But there are some big differences that can make a fan of Jimmy Neutron really confused. More on that later. But basically the incident that caused the series to start was Sheen jumped in one of Jimmy's rockets, pushed a button he was explicitly told not to press. Sheen, do not push this button. And crash landed onto the planet Xenu where he has no way of getting back home. He first meets the Emperor and the Emperor immediately takes a liking to Sheen and is constantly very supportive of his shenanigans throughout the series. He's also very casually a terrible ruler. And his daughter Princess Oom is obnoxious in every single way. I've never hated a character more. I'm not joking. If Sheen reacts to a character like this. I love you. I think that's a good indication you've gone too far. No redeeming qualities. It is so painful. I'll elaborate on everything after these introductions, obviously. Next, he meets Dorcas. <laughs> Dorcas. And Pinter, which are the villain and sidekick. Pinter is just straight up there. Have you ever seen a character that's just there? He's pretty obviously in love with Dorcas, but it's unclear if Dorcas feels the same way. Dorcas hates Sheen and wants to destroy him, planning ways on getting him exiled or executed. I wish they played a more active role in the series, but the formulaic nature of his character reminds me of Coyote and Roadrunner in that no one ever notices his plans and they're just brushed off so easily. He's never a real threat and when you think of all the strong villains in Jimmy Neutron, it feels like a wasted opportunity. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Next we meet Nesmith, who is an Earth ape that crash landed on Xenu and when he went through Xenu's atmosphere, he gained the ability to speak. He is the smartest character in the series, meant to react to the shenanigans, kind of like this. <laughs> His catchphrase that never gets old is, and here we go. And he's also the show's punching bag. I don't know why he remains friends with any of these people he's treated like shit. Asifa looks straight out of James Cameron's avatar and acts very similarly, except she can also yodel. Wow. She is the love interest, which makes sense because she's an age appropriate girl and she looks mostly human and that's that's really all it takes. At the very, very end of the first episode, we meet Doppy. That is spelled D-O-P-P, why? The tra la 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 is silent but felt. As you can see, this is the creator's not so very subtle way of working around the whole you can't have Carl thing. Dobby is a silly guy. I don't mind him. I think he's very funny at times. He's just exactly like Carl, but more mucusy somehow. At that point, if Nick gave the okay to that, 
Why didn't they just let them have Carl? It's strange. This whole show is strange. Ain't no love in my man. Shoe up, shoe up. If you were to tell me there was an entire show about Sheen and Ultra Lord only came up twice, I would have laughed in your face. His main interest, his hyper fixation is gone. He also only mentions his friends once. There is an entire episode of Jimmy Neutron where Carl and Sheen are spiraling at the idea of Jimmy moving to another town. But Sheen moves to another planet and he's he's totally fine. Or in the Jimmy Neutron movie where the parents get abducted and there's the whole lesson of like, oh, we do need our parents actually. Sheen never mentions his dad. This sweet old Dilf. Why? Why would you forget about him? In episode 5B, he finally mentions missing home, but the inciting incident is just Xenu's food sucking ass. There was a whole episode about holidays where Sheen shares with them Earth celebrations, which by the way, this is the first time we canonically saw Sheen's mom, which I don't have to tell you is wild. Anyway, that holiday episode would have been a great time to have Sheen missing having the holidays with his family and having an emotional breakthrough, but there was none of that. It was the cliche overdone, oh, it's nice to give too. It's not all about getting. You're stranded on another planet. Why are these the lessons you're learning right now? I know I'm looking too much into a goofy show, but using a character whose world we've come to know and love does a disservice to the type of slapstick you're forcing. The stakes are so high and he doesn't even think about going home. In fact, he actively sabotages this by fucking around with the rocket constantly. I'm just gonna say it, it feels very out of character to me. It would have been a little bit more believable if he at least had, I don't know, Carl there. But as we know, the Nickelodeon execs shut that down so he had to go completely alone. Or it would have been more believable if they just gave him amnesia or something. Amnesia? More like amshinja. <laughs> Also, they'll just change Sheen's character entirely whenever it's convenient. The entire premise of the episode I Gotta Go is Sheen, the most shameless character ever, lies about needing to use the restroom because he thinks a Sifal will find him gross. He's done way grosser things in front of a lot of people, but he draws the line at saying, hey, I actually just have to pee real quick. I have to piss and shit and fart. That's just normal. Don't give yourself a UTI just to impress some girl. I remember trying to watch the show as a kid, being really excited for a Jimmy Neutron sequel and quitting immediately after the first episode because it was just too different. Apparently people agreed with me because as I was doing research for this video, I found Sheen listed in the loathsome characters wiki with his entire page being dedicated to how he was a much better character in the Jimmy Neutron series. But to the show's credit, other than making Sheen a little too carefree and kind of a jerk, the off-the-wall perspective shift makes sense. Its style is completely different and the way it's told is completely different because it's following a completely different character. From these transition screens to the unique way issues are dealt with, it is true to the chaos of Sheen. Now let's talk about how Xenu worships him. Without a plan. Plan. Sheen has a level of charisma that is seen as contagious earlier on than just this show. In fact, in Jimmy Neutron, he basically started a cult already, so now it's just being spread to different planets. As Nesmith says in episode 12a, Sheen, you have a unique genius for promoting stupidity. This show is the antithesis of Jimmy Neutron, and yet the lessons still go hand in hand somehow. Someone too smart could cause the destruction of a planet as seen in the OG series. But on the flip side, Planet Sheen says someone too stupid could also cause the destruction of a planet. The message of both promotes being average. Being just right down the middle in every way. And we finally have someone who exemplifies that. Nesmith is what these shows want us to aspire to be. The only morally good character in both of these series. Just smart enough to see through people's stupidity, but not smart enough to like experiment on people. Just a boring, I told you so, forgettable ape. Paul's uncool cousin, if you will. And what's also interesting about Nesmith is while Doppy is clearly the most similar to Carl, I'd say that power dynamic wise, Nesmith and Sheen are very similar to that of Jimmy and Carl in that Nesmith is an unwilling participant in Sheen shenanigans, much like how Carl is in Jimmy's. Let's pull up that monkey contract as seen in Carl's dream. Wait a second, monkey boy? No matter how humiliating, distract the guys with your cookies. Demeaning, ridiculous, or dangerous the activities. Oh, stop that. Hey, so we're monkey cannon blasting him into space. I am an ape, not a monkey. Apes have no tails. Uh-uh, Mr. Monkey. 
holy shit. So yes, throughout the series, Sheen is really mistreating Nesmith, ignoring his advice, and then accusing him of not giving said advice when things go horribly wrong. While Nesmith is the main punching bag, Sheen does inflict pain on others as well. In episode 9b, Sheen combines two different parts of the rocket to accidentally create a teleportation device, which he uses as a magic wand in the magic show. Many people in the audience are very enthusiastic about this, saying, zap me, zap me. One guy, however, says, please don't, but Sheen zaps him anyway. <laughs> Also in episode 14b, Sheen is pretending to be a doctor. He does brain surgery and controls Bob like a robot, like Plankton does to SpongeBob in that one episode, which just perfectly exemplifies classic Jimmy Neutron power tripping shenanigans. Why is Sheen acting like this? Well, the Emperor constantly enables him. And because in the end, he saves the day, whether intentional or not. Does that sound familiar? It should, because it's exactly what Jimmy Neutron does. But instead of saving the day with science and intelligence, Planet Sheen shows off the power of bullshitting. The art of scamming and repeatedly telling everyone you're amazing to the point where they believe it regardless of merit or skill. Speaking of which, hey, the Athena P YouTube channel, right? <laughs> if you subscribe, you're gonna feel awesome and amazing and, and badass and hot and sexy. So you might as well, you might as well subscribe to me because I'm the best channel. That didn't feel right. Another way Sheen is quickly able to obtain power and fame on Xenu is that Xenu is way less advanced than Earth. For one, the Emperor gave Sheen an IQ test, which Sheen called an ick test, and he passed being the biggest genius in Xenu. More like Sheenius. Anyway, the people of Xenu are super impressionable. For example, the Emperor can literally control what kind of art movement will be super popular just by declaring it so. Which, you know, completely goes against the counterculture movement that many art follows, which is, which is epic and cool. Love that. And... There's no resistance. One reason for this complete lack of complex thinking is this planet is seemingly very small. This is supported in episode 23b when they said four people getting contaminated is the largest epidemic they had. Must be nice. So I think the reason that the Emperor is completely entertained and enthralled by Sheen's ideas is because it's the first time in forever anybody in Xenu has had any. Well, besides Dorcas, but he's a loner and doesn't have that level of charisma. Speaking of the people of Xenu, what? are they? The people of Xenu, called Xenuians, are very varied in appearance. The only thing they share is living on the same planet. If I were to search for similarities, most of them are purple. We have similarities within certain professions. For example, builders and guards. We even saw a new guard hatch from an egg, fully in guard attire, quite literally made for the job. We also have the Makadars, which are a brutality squad, but they're also maids. You know those buff guys on TikTok in the little maid outfits? They did it first. They also also look a lot like the guards, but they're different species? Convergent species, perhaps? Like Diglett and Wiglet? Yeah, I learned about science through Pokemon. So something I found interesting is that Asifa is a Glamorian with clear differences in culture. For example, the traditional mustache dances. Having a creature called a Ruv in her throat to help her yodel. So she's not listed as a Zenuian in the wiki. Neither is Dapi. Dapi and Dapi's family, who suspiciously look like Coral's family, hmm, they look like a knock off version. Like, this looks like Ratatouille to me. This looks like Aladdin with 1D. Not that I would ever watch those movies. Pfft. Anyway, they're actually Lorvaglors. Very goopy creatures that are hunted for their goo by the species Geshlups. I feel like I'm talking in Dr. Seuss. So anyway, Asifa, Dapi, not Zenuians. But all these guys are Zenuians? Is it just assimilation at this point? The only thing that distinguishes Zenuians from non-Zenuians is that non-Zenuians have culture. And the Zenuians are like, well, I don't know, I just live here. The only thing that's still throwing me off is the genetics of Zenuians are wild. For example, the Emperor and the Empress, yes, she exists. She was only in one episode because she's awake for one day out of the whole year. They created Princess Oom. So yes, the princess gets her height from her mother. But what's with that second face? This is addressed in episode 11a when they're celebrating Oom's popping out day. And no, this isn't her birthday. This is the day the second face popped up. Gender reveal. Oh shit, she's a Gemini. They weren't anticipating it, but she's here and they're like, yay, that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun. Theory, the Zenuian people are just an anomaly. They are a combination of so many different species that dominant traits they didn't even know about pop up. And they're like, oh, okay, an orange flying eye. This is, this is cool. Now here are some beasts that live on this planet. They are more described as animals or creatures and less like people. Don't be speciesist. So the first dude is Borok the Destroyer, a flying talking pony that berates the people of Xenu with his magical nose hair. 
Why are you watching this show? Asifa's pet is this dinosaur looking thing called a Choctaw, and in episode 3A, we see that Choctaw wants to Foctaw. In episode 5B, we have scorpion cows that squirt cheese out of its udders. <laughs> and fire-breathing waffles, which feels like something Binging with Babish or Josh from Mythical Kitchen would turn into a fire meal, like spicy waffles and some sort of scorpion steak thing with cheese. Oh my god, mm, I'm hungry. The Emperor has a pet parawatta named Biba. More on this later. R.I.P. In episode 9A, Dorcas unleashes mocking blurgs on Sheen, which are just rude creatures that insults people, but their bodies can't take compliments. Weirdly relatable? When they're giving compliments, they explode. After they wiped out this group, Sheen said, kill him with kindness, which is a cold line after murder, if I'm being honest. Next, in episode 10a, we see a diphthwack, which, in their exact words, a shaved rooster-like beast with an underbite wearing an eye patch and a bandana on its head. Is the eye patch and bandana part of its body? Or just what they like to wear? Who knows? But it is pretty funny that in this book there are Greek symbols. Episode 11b, Booyaboos are in the meadow singing their beautiful song. This means the tradition of brothel is about to begin, where they jump off a cliff in bread. As amazing as this holiday sounds, this show really leans heavily into the random equals funny early internet humor. Lay epic banana bacon yon cat derp face moment. Sorry, I don't speak Italian. Episode 12a, we meet the Agronons, which are described as large lumbering behemoths. And we see that filth makes them more powerful, while being clean makes them tiny and weak. Episode 12b, there's a brain flower. If you can't figure out his riddle, he eats you. And if you do figure out the riddle, he forkin' dies. A grot is a vicious little-known creature that looks like a baseball bat. Episode 16b, here's a giant glowworm. It looks like a combo of the lanternfish from Nemo and the Alaskan bullworm from Spongebob. SpongeBob, a total nightmare. Hat squid beast, tarantula duck thing. Sure, but shut up, I'm getting to the best one. In episode 20A, Dobby gets a pet doat, the safest, cutest species in Xenu, and named him Doty. I dote on Doty the dote, dude. He's like an axolotl, and guess what? Guess what? Nothing bad happened to him. It's finally happened! I have been hurt so many times in the past. I am over the moon. A cutie finally just gets to be a cutie in peace. There's more, but we'll end on a high note. What's next? Oh yeah, in episode 7b, the Emperor's true colors start shining through. Which is not really surprising, because the Jimmy Neutron universe always emphasizes that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Face. It was just a bit more difficult to see at first, because the Emperor is on our main character's side. So usually we see him as jolly and silly and unassuming. This episode, however, opens with him saying, maybe I should get my sirens fixed. And remember, when he's saying this, he's talking about fixing people. To really drive the point home, we see a siren pleading, don't fix me. This is also the episode where the Emperor wants to banish Nesmith because he believes Nesmith ate his pet. Which makes sense, right? But at the end of the episode, when it's revealed that the pet was just lost, the Emperor eats it. Usually this would upset me to no end because I'm a little baby, and it does and I am. But they had this ongoing bit throughout the episode of playing the law and order, dun dun. And right after that happened, they played it while showing this image, which is pretty funny, actually. The show made me laugh. This would be a great Twitter reaction picture. The Emperor also sends Dorcas to the prison tower just because the people were really excited that somebody was going to get arrested today. And if that isn't bad enough, that's all just one episode. By the end of episode 12a, the Emperor eats one of the shrunken agronauts. Tiny Leader's first thought when there's something smaller than him is to eat it. But wait, there's more. 14a, the Emperor eats the Drakbok once it's defeated. 20b, the Emperor eats the Skucks once it's defeated. Fuck it, we're eating the rich now. Mmm, grape. In episode 19b, the Emperor told Dorcas that he does not care that Sheen destroyed his house. He only cares that the people of Xenu get trampled because then there would be no one to cheer for him. In episode 21a, it's revealed that there's a torture chamber where somebody just slaps your tongue forever. Episode 26a, there's a talent show and anyone who bores the Emperor gets executed. Wow, what a lovable goofball. The next one is a perfect transition. In episode 11b, when the Emperor finds out that Sheen is a child, he's very surprised. This brings up the scary question. How old is his daughter? You know, the one he's supportive of pursuing Sheen through forceful means as a love interest. I'm Chris Hansen. Why don't you have a seat right over there? This is no exaggeration, the worst ongoing joke I've seen in a kid's show ever. Princess Oom is constantly licking Sheen, which they call a Raffenhofer. More like Raffenlocker. 
up. It's so explicit, I really don't know what they were thinking with this. Like, how do you even pitch this? What's the punchline? Remember Sheen, that child character we all know and love? What if an older alien woman kept licking him, making him very uncomfortable and scared? Ha ha ha! By episode 8b, I didn't think it could get any worse, but then there was a compilation of her licking different parts of him. No shit, eyeball, brain, and butt! If you think it can't get any worse, get ready. Episode 17b, after a creature Raffenhoffered Oom, she's in distress and uncomfortable, and it seems like she's starting to really understand how this violation would make other people feel. But no, she continues. Episode 22a, she needs to distract Oom so he pretends he wants a Raffenhoffer, and she reacts to this very surprised. Meaning all the other times, she knows he doesn't want it. She's not clueless, she knows it's very unpleasant for him, and she does not care. This mixed with the Emperor encouraging it and threatening Sheen to like accept it is a lot. I don't really care if people think I'm overreacting. This is a beyond strange thing to show children. <laughs> I think this show failed for the reason most spin-off shows fail. Expectations are just not met. On top of that, in this very specific instance, the creators went in with an idea that has nothing to do with Jimmy Neutron and they just forced it to fit. Also, the demographic of this show and Jimmy Neutron is very different. Planet Sheen is marketed a lot younger. At this point, why not just use different characters? I also have to mention that the network gave up on the show halfway through when they moved it to Nicktoons, which is ironically when it started getting a little bit better? Even now with the supposed murmurs and hype about a Jimmy Neutron reboot, I wonder if the creators would even address Planet Sheen at all, or would it be scrapped from the canon altogether? After watching 26 episodes of this notorious series, I have some ideas. A popular fan-made finale for this series is that Jimmy Neutron and friends go to bring Sheen back home. This didn't happen, so we missed the comedic genius of, I'm Carl, I'm Doppy, Sheen says we look and sound and act the same. I don't see it. <laughs> and weirdly enough, I think this fanon movie, if it were to come out, would be the most popular thing to come out of the Planet Sheen series. The lack of closure from this one season upsets many, as it kind of feels like Sheen is stuck on this planet forever as his friends mourn him back home. Dark. We all pray to Ultra Lord that Sheen has found peace. So one theory I have that this show actually supports is that it was a dream the whole time. Hear me out. In the very first episode, we see Sheen shove his arm through his nose and out his ear. Maybe the change in atmosphere caused his body to contort in ways it couldn't before, like how when Nesmith entered Xenu's atmosphere, it caused him to talk. But no, because Sheen explains that it took him three years of practice, although we've never seen him do this in Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> Fascinating. Episode 19b, Sheen shoves his hand in his mouth and pulls things from his belly. Another example of cartoony shenanigans that did not happen throughout the three seasons of Jimmy Neutron. Also, Nesmith the talking ape, Sheen refers to as his monkey sidekick. Sheen mentions monkeys a lot throughout Jimmy Neutron. This is something that can clearly be ingrained in his subconscious mind. In the Jimmy Neutron lore video, we discussed that Carl's dream was Carl's brain's way of taking back power from the abusive Jimmy. I would argue that Planet Sheen is Sheen's version of this. Further proof, all the shots of Earth in this series look so empty and dead. You know, kind of like how it would in perhaps, I don't know, a dream. I know the real reason for this is budget, but I'm just going off of what I have to work with. So let's say you're not sold on the dream thing. How about this? I think if this is all real, that this series would take place in between the Jimmy Neutron movie and the Jimmy Neutron series. Let me explain. One reason, and maybe I'm placing too much weight on a childhood OTP, is Sheen doesn't mention Libby at all. All. In the Jimmy Neutron movie, Sheen's crush on Libby doesn't develop yet, so maybe the endgame ship of Sheen and Libby happens after him and Asifa's little crush that doesn't go anywhere. That's not the only evidence I have to point towards this. Also, I imagine a space expedition would be a lot less scary after defeating the Yokians. Picture it, Sheen's second trip to space. He lands on a planet of aliens that don't want to feed him to a giant chicken, but actually worship him. So he's in no rush to get home, especially since at this point, it would probably be summer and he'd be in summer school which means he wouldn't be seeing his friends that much at all anyway. Establishing wherever this whatever I don't care attitude came from would have sold me on this show more. So these circumstances would have made it way more believable to me. Like yeah, a vacation to another planet for the summer, sure. I also think it would have been nice to have Jimmy like call him every once in a while so we know that people are aware of the fact that Sheen is alive. Something else that points to this timeline that I made up that somebody will probably disprove in the comments is Sheen writes letters to his grandma. It's the only person he writes letters to. The person that 
that he mentions the most back on Earth is his grandma. This isn't somebody he mentions a lot in the Jimmy Neutron series. Part of me wonders if she was in the picture and now she's not anymore. Or maybe his grandma lived with Sheen and his dad once Sheen's mom passed away, and then as time went on, she moved out again. It just seems like his relationship with her shifted at one point. What aggravates me the most about this series, other than the constant assault jokes, is that it could have been good. I'm not sure if I'm falling in love with my captor right now, but hear me out. There were a few moments that showed me this series' potential. Some of the jokes were even good, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna show you my top three right now in a little Athena enjoying Planet Sheen cringe comp. This is lame. Daddy, can we walk over to Shane's party? No, we're going to run. Bye, Dorcas. People have seen you. There's no need for a lot. Oh, okay. Tortillas don't grow on trees. Yes, and eggs don't sing. Cause I'm falling love and easy for you. With everything I told you about the show, Imagine this as a series finale. We do the whole Jimmy and his friends fly over to save Sheen thing, but instead of everyone being cool with it and saying their goodbyes, we face the actual villains of this series, the Emperor and Princess Oom. It checks out because they put Sheen on a pedestal. You think they'd just say bye that easily? No, they want to keep him, baby. The Jimmy Neutron crew would obviously have to team up with Nesmith, Asifa, and Dape, but I think they'd also team up with Dorcas and Pinter. Those two aren't fighting for Sheen's happiness, they just want him gone. And in the end, the monarchy is disassembled, we guillotine the emperor and his little bitch daughter, and all the people that were in jail for stupid reasons are freed. Come on, come on, admit it, that would be epic. Believe it or not, this was really heavily suggested, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Now I have to start Dinosaur Train because there are a hundred episodes. Oh my god. I have no editors, I have no counsel, all I have are the wonderful people watching. So genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, and please consider subscribing, alright? Have a great day, butt lovers. Bye!